How to find the height of a non-right triangle is an important concept when it comes to the ambiguous case. In order to find the height in a non-right triangle, what we are going to have to do is actually create a height and then discover the relationships that exist around the height. So starting with this particular triangle, as you can see, I've got triangle ABC. And of course, I've got little a, little b, little c to denote the side links. And what I'm going to do is actually show you three different ways to create a height and discover its relationship so that you can see it from all of the angle's perspectives. Right now, we're going to draw an altitude from angle B in this slide. And then I'll show you how to do it with uh, an altitude from angle A and then an altitude from angle C. So right now, we are drawing an altitude from angle B to the opposite side, which is little b. And whenever you draw an altitude, of course, you are going to create a right angle. This is going to denote our height. When you draw an altitude, notice that what I have done is create a right triangle actually on both sides. But I'm going to start with angle A. And so to do angle A and its relationship with the height, then let's start discovering some things. All right, first of all, with this right triangle that I drew for you, we do know the hypotenuse. It is C. And we do know opposite according from angle A. But we do not know this distance down here. We know that the entire side length from A all the way over to C is a distance of B. But as far as this side length that we create from A to B, that is not known. So. We don't really need it uh, to determine the height of this particular triangle because in a right triangle, we get to use the concepts of trigonometry, which are sine, cosine, and tangent relationships. And since we already know opposite and we already know hypotenuse, then we can officially say that the sine of angle A is opposite to hypotenuse. And notice that it incorporates the letter H. Well, if we set up a proportion, just put sine A over 1 is equal to H over C, we could then cross multiply in order to solve for H. So sine of A times C equals to 1 times H. Or in other words, H is the sine of angle A times C. So in other words, to represent the height, I would need to know the angle measurement, and I would need to know a side length. And I would then take the sine of that angle and multiply it by the side length in order to get a number that represents the height. So, so far, sine of angle A times C is a way to represent the height. But as you can see, we can also draw an altitude from any angle. Notice the first time I did it from angle B. This time I'm going to draw an altitude from angle C. And of course, once again, when you draw an altitude, you create perpendicularity, which then in turn creates our height for the triangle. Now, once again, you can see that we've separated into two right triangles. Uh, so I'm going to mark this right triangle off for you so that you can see it. And since we've already worked with angle A in the first slide, let's work with angle B. Now, as you can see, in this triangle, we do not know the length of this side. Now, I know the length of the side from B all the way to A is a length of C. But just from that side length all the way to where I create the altitude is a side length I do not know. So therefore, 
uh, do not want to use that and don't need to use that because H is opposite angle B and A is the hypotenuse to angle B and both of these links are sufficient to create a trigonometric ratio once again I would use sine because sine is defined as opposite to hypotenuse so the sine of angle B is opposite to hypotenuse and so once again in solving for H we'll just set up a proportion so that we can then cross multiply so the sine of angle B times A is equal to 1 times H so therefore H is the sine of angle B times A so in other words this same number this same H that I found in the first slide is going to be the same H value that I've now found in the second slide but I'm using the sine of angle B times A so we'll uncover this one now and so now we've got the still the same number the height number but we've shown that we can get the same height number from two different angles let's now go to our third angle so we're going to draw an altitude from angle A and when we draw an altitude from an angle of course we're creating perpendicularity and this particular side length will denote as H and as you can see once again we've created a two right triangles let's look at this one in particular this particular right triangle has a side length right here that we do not know now I know from C all the way to B it has a side length of A but just this distance right here is not known so we're not going to use it and we don't need to because if we're going to work with angle C then H is the opposite of angle C and B is the hypotenuse for angle C and so to work opposite to hypotenuse that in trigonometric ratios is called sine and so the sine of angle C is opposite to hypotenuse so once again we'll set up a proportion so that we will then cross multiply so the sine of angle C times B is 1 times H so therefore H is the sine of angle C times B so in other words this same H value that I've gotten in the last two slides is the same number in this one except that we're getting it from doing the sine of angle C times B so we'll pull this one off and here's another way to get the height we can do the sine of angle C times B so as you can see in all three of these slides that I've done you can work the sine of angle A times C or you can work the sine of angle B times A or finally the sine of angle C times B all three give you the exact same H value 